Well, the day has come. We got to get this rear axle set up for my FJ40 Land Cruiser. Now, this is a Sterling 10.5 inch rear axle out of a F350 Power Stroke. In the previous video, if you guys missed it, we completely tore it down. It was completely full of rust. So we sandblasted it, we painted it, we did some Cerakote on the hubs and diff cover. Now we need to install our gears, our locker. We got all new wheel bearings, brake, calipers, rotors, everything for this axle. It's gotta be brand new. As you guys know, we did the front Dana 60 for this FJ40. Now I struggled a little bit on that gear install, but I learned a lot. So I think this one's gonna go a lot smoother. We're gonna do it a little bit different this time. Instead of starting out with trying to dial in our pinion bearing preload, what I'm going to actually do is completely not even put in a crush sleeve or a solid sleeve. I'm going to basically put the bearings in, put the races in, and tighten the pinion nut until we get our pinion preload. And I'm basically gonna use the nut to set the preload. I think that's gonna save a lot of time initially. And once we get our pinion depth dialed in, we can adjust this pinion preload without affecting that at all. So that's the game plan, I'm gonna try it out. I wasted so much time going back and forth with pinion bearing preload on the front axle. Another thing we gotta do right off the bat is get our new ring gear installed on our new locker. Just like the front, I decided to just go front and rear with the Grizzly lockers from Yukon. These are mechanical lockers, so they lock up fully, and then when you turn, they have a mechanical slippage to them, so you can still turn, but then when you straighten back out, it's completely locked. So we gotta get that all bolted together, and these Sterlings use, unlike the Dana 60, they use the carrier shims on the outside of the bearings. So we don't have to worry about any setup bearings for the carrier. And as far as I know, this pinion depth is gonna be shimmed off of the rear bearing race, just like we did on the front axles. All right guys, I am finally happy. So I started cleaning the inside of this thing with just a rag and some brake cleaner, just because there was a little bit of sand in it. I think this plug up there was leaking a little sand uh, for when I sandblasted it. Plus these axle tubes, or at least this one over here was disgusting inside. There was a bunch of rust. So pressure washer it was, this thing is looking brand new now. Just like I thought, we have the shims right here for the pinion to adjust pinion depth. Well, they actually give you both. I'm gonna use the race method just because I think that's a lot easier because the setup race is much easier to make. And instead of using this set, this bearing as a setup bearing, because this thing is clearly gonna be worn out and not even close to the same spec as a new bearing, uh, the races, like I said, the races really don't wear. So it's gonna be a lot more accurate to do a setup race with these shims here and then obviously we got everything else these are for the shims for the carrier so there's a bunch there um, but other than that we are good I actually got the new races for the pinion in the uh, freezer we're gonna pound those actually we're gonna pound the front one in the front one doesn't need a setup race but this one we are just going to sand on my little belt sander there we're just gonna sand the outside of this race so that we can slide it in and out to adjust our pinion depth with these pinion shims that's how we're gonna set our pinion depth and then like I said we're gonna put this thing together without a crush sleeve so that's the crush sleeve and then the eliminator I bought is right here so we're actually gonna put it together like I said without anything we're gonna use the pinion nut to basically get it close to the right preload and then we'll move on to setting our pinion depth, our carrier uh, preload here, our backlash, all that good stuff. Hey, real quick guys, I gotta let you know that I have the engine bay light kits back in stock. Now these were out of stock for quite some time. I completely sold out right away last time I dropped these and I've had a heck of a time getting these back in stock, but we got them. I got them all up on the website if you guys wanna check them out. Also, as far as hood struts go, all my hood struts are stocked and I do have the third generation Tacoma. That is 2016 up to 2023. I do have that kit ready to go on the website. It's all on the website, avrcustoms.com. I'll have it linked up in the corner and down in the description box where you guys can check it out. One thing I want to do real quick is pull this 
pinion bearing off because there is the factory shim underneath this bearing and I want to get that shim out to measure it. That gives us a really good starting point to shim for pinion depth. Now, like I said, we're not gonna be using the shim under the bearing. We're gonna be shimming under the bearing race. So we're gonna take our measurement about 28 thousandths of this factory shim, and we're gonna find 28 thousandths worth of shim for the bearing race. And we're gonna use that. That'll get us really close. It won't get us perfect. Usually there's a little bit of adjustment that needs to be made, but instead of a total wild guess, it gets us really close. Well, after some messing around, we got this thing set up really close to where it should be. Now we need to run a pattern to check the depth of that pinion. So that's where we're at now. Right now we got right about seven thou. Let me kind of zero that back out right there. So right about seven thousandths of backlash. It's, the spec is six to 10. So I'm fine being a little on the tight side, which obviously is still in spec, but everything's gonna loosen up as it breaks in. So I'm happy with that. Um, as far as case preload or carrier bearing preload, you want to struggle putting this thing in. Now in the video, you guys saw it went in pretty easy. I have taken it out a few more times and added shims and I had to use the punch and the hammer to get it in. You want to struggle a little bit, you want that tight you don't want that carrier walking around at all. So now that we're dialed in on the preload of these two bearings here in the carrier, if we ever need to move it from side to side, we're gonna have to take shims from this side, add it to this side so that we maintain this preload on these bearings. Like I said, you don't want it too loose. Obviously, I mean, unless you have a stretcher, it's about impossible to get it too tight. So now that we're at this point, we'll grab some of that yellow paint, we'll wipe it on and we'll run a pattern and see what we're looking like for pinion depth. If we do need to change it, it's not that hard because all we have to do, pull the carrier out, pull the pinion out, and then since we made that setup bearing race, we just pull that race out and move shims around with that. It is a lot of work taking it all apart, but you, there's nothing to press on and off. Well, here's our first pattern. Honestly, very, very close. Uh, I think it's just maybe a touch too deep, the pinion. You can see it's kind of on the front of this gear here, on the ring gear, and it's a little bit of kind of a half moon down into the root. So I was saying it's a little bit too deep. So honestly, very close. I think I'm gonna pull it apart 
and pull about three thousandths out of that shim for the pinion just to pull that pinion back a little bit i think it'll pull this pattern into the center of this gear a little better and i think it'll look a lot better with just i think one adjustment we can get this thing really close um, and then backlash We'll have to check that again. We'll put it back together, run a pattern, check our backlash. And hopefully with one adjustment, we can get this thing dialed in. Well guys, that did the opposite, or it didn't really do what I expected it to. And now you can see we're showing shallow. It's kind of straight on the outside lens, kind of like a, you know, they call it a hamburger bun where it's kind of swooped in like that on the inside and on the top it's flat and it's shoved way down towards the toe. So you can see the coast side is out towards the heel as well. So that is telling me that it's too shallow now i only took out three thousandths which honestly the pattern before the first pattern we had was really nice i think i'm just going to put the three thousandths back in and we're going to call it good because that pattern looked really really good before it was just a little bit towards the toe which i mean i don't know i don't really think it matters because you can see these are these are this whole page right here is all acceptable patterns and you can see the pattern running off the toe and off the heel and I guess, you know, it's acceptable. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. Three thousandths back in. We're going to dial in the pinion preload with our uh, new crush sleeve, which is right here. This is actually for a Ford 9-inch, uh, but this is the one that people say works for the Sterling. I guess they don't even really make one for a Sterling. So I'm hoping that will work. One thing we will have to do is just take our crush sleeve that we pulled out of this pinion, measure that thickness, and then we can get it really, really close on this. Once we get that in, get this torque down, then we can measure the preload of that with this inch pound uh, torque wrench here. And now this, this is a different little different style. It's just like the dial style. And if I, if I'm recalling correctly, that should be, well, let's look it up right here. Uh, 20 to 35 on new bearings on used bearings at six to eight. You can see just how much those brand new bearings kind of break in. So we're going to get that set up. And after we get the pinion preload, I mean, we're pretty much good to go on this thing. We can put it all together. All right, we got it back together with our 3000 uh, pinion shim added back in. We're checking backlash and we're pretty tight. We, I mean, we're in spec. We're at the very, very bottom of the spec at 6000. Um, now what I'm doing, I found this, uh, I don't know, department.weber edu. I don't remember how I found it. I just Googled it. You'll probably find it uh, through Google, but what I've, I've been using this, I've been looking at this and this seems to be a lot easier to kind of decipher what's going on. So right now, when we're looking at our pattern, we have contact, let me get that out of here. We have our uh, pattern more to towards the toe on the drive side and on the coast side as well. You see they're both kind of towards the toe. I'm really happy with the pattern. You can see it's a nice oval shape. It's not like a half moon anymore, but they are towards the toe and the toe. So we got toe, toe contact pattern right there where the drive side is towards the toe, coast side is towards the toe. This shows to increase gear backlash, which makes total sense because our backlash is right at the bottom at 6,000. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a couple, like maybe 3,000 out of this side, add it to this side because we do want to keep our bearing preload. We just want to move this ring gear 
out just a little bit to get a little bit more backlash and apparently that should move our pattern towards the center of that gear unlike i mean what i thought i mean obviously if you move the pinion away it will move the pattern away but it messes up the pattern as well so it's kind of a it's kind of a compromise between moving your ring gear back and forth and your pinion in and out Well, I learned this the hard way. If you're gonna use one of these four nine inch, I guess probably any spacer is the same, but so I had this uh, with the fat side down onto the pinion here, but there was a little bit of a radius on that pinion. And when I took it apart, there's a little bit of a chamfer on this one edge. That has to go down like that. Because if you don't do that, it gets hung up and it doesn't see all the way. So I got this thing all together and it had a ton of slop in it just because it was getting hung up on that. So make sure you have that chamfer down against that pinion right there. And we can get the shims go inside there and that goes just down like that. And we should be good to go now. Well, we are all back together, 100%. Everything is torqued down. Our pattern looks really good. Our pinion preload ended up being right about 25 inch pounds. So we're about perfect there. Before we move along any farther, we got our package from Cerakote. We need to coat that one last backing plate. This is the tungsten Cerakote, so it's that dark gray. We got it in the blaster. We gotta finish it up blasting. And let's coat that, and then we can go through and put this entire axle together. Uh, we got the diff cover, and then all new wheel bearings our hubs everything we got to get let's just get this axle 100 complete
Well guys, just like that, we are done with this axle. It turned out so perfect. Now, I am so stoked because the next video, we're throwing axles, all our suspension, our links, coilovers, everything onto our frame. We're gonna have a rolling chassis. It's all gonna be painted and it's all gonna look amazing. I am so, so excited to see it as a rolling chassis all painted up. So definitely, definitely don't miss the next video. That's what we're tackling. Now this axle went together so much easier and faster than the front. Just because like I said, I'm pretty new to ring and pinion installs and what made, honestly, what I think made the biggest time saving difference was not trying to set up my pinion preload first. So without putting anything, no spacer, no crush sleeve, no nothing in there, just getting my preload close with just having the nut tightened up. That saved me so much time because I was able to just tighten the nut. I didn't have to adjust anything, just tighten the nut up and I can go straight into backlash and pinion depth. And then every time you change the pinion depth, you also, it screws up the pinion preload. So anytime you change the pinion depth, you'd have to come back, mess with the preload, get that set back. It just saves so much time doing it how I did it right here. Well, anyways, guys, I am out of here. I will see you guys in the next video. Probably one of the most exciting videos coming next, so definitely don't miss it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once you go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one.